After the Fed's meeting yesterday, QE, back in the spotlight, Vince Lancey's up next. I'm beginning to think my next guest is psychic because he's been on a consecutive right streak. Vince Lancey joins me now. Vince, thanks for being with me. <laughs> Thank you. A broken clock is right twice a day. Vince, you called it a few weeks back. You said inflation would become the Fed's main focus. Uh, that's absolutely apparent following the meeting yesterday. What are your thoughts? Well, um, uh, as you um, uh, gave me more details on it, uh, I just read headlines. The, the Fed, the, the governors at the Fed are disagreeing behind the scenes very aggressively. There's a big split now between doves and hawks. And um, in light of what's happening globally uh, on a potential inflationary scale, using Japan as the uh, starting point, uh, the, the Fed, uh, the, these Fed governors are saying we're worried about inflation. No economic recovery can continue with oil prices at 95, 98, 100 dollars. Uh, we're not in favor of a continued QE infinity. And the markets pricing utopia in terms of cash flow reacted violently as a result. So Vince, come March, will we see a rock'em sock'em debate over QE? A debate? No, I think I, I, you can have a big debate. But what's going to happen is the policy will be frozen. I don't think they'll be increasing it. I don't think they'll be decreasing it. But there will be no more and there will be more talk about it ending a little sooner than expected. So in terms of rock'em sock'em, uh, yeah, but we unfortunately won't be able to be behind those doors. Uh, there may be fisticuffs, but we don't see it. The markets, however, will be you know, rocking and rolling. That's for sure. So Vince, if we have to tie this back to gold, what does all this translate into for gold? All uh, right. If you want to subscribe to this theory, all assets are overvalued. Uh, all assets. So gold for, for dropped for two reasons, is dropping and will continue to drop uh, if you follow these two reasons. One, the dollar is strengthening because everyone else in the world is weakening their currency but us. So gold moves opposite the dollar and gold will drop as a result. Two, um, gold as a safe haven uh, hedge against Europe collapsing is no longer uh, a worry. Uh, Europe is now out of the headlines. Uh, whether Europe collapses or not is entirely a different story. Um, but gold is no longer needed as a safe haven. There are other smaller things that are big. Gold on the balance sheet of a bank, again, you only get 50 cents for every dollar you have of gold. So if you want $100 and you only are getting 50 in collateral, you've got to sell your gold to raise your cash levels. And finally, Soros made an announcement and uh, Bacon that they lessen their GLD positions. Now, that's funny. Uh, we can discuss why that could be disingenuous, but the bottom line is, that's probably the guy who's been selling during London time for the last two months. Vince, before we change topics, you mentioned Soros, but how relevant was that news? That happened in Q4. Wasn't it already baked into the equation? Well, that's that, that's that's the thing. The gold is a small market. I mean, a trillion dollars can corner the gold market. So Soros or any smart hedge fund manager is going to sell and then tell you he sold. He's not going to tell you he sold, tell you he's selling and then do it. So while we view him roiling the markets two months ago, um, in reality, uh, it was a small move compared to what happened afterwards. The market now is reacting um, uh, to the dollar as well as in sympathy to guys like him that, that piggyback him but are much less capitalized getting out. So to my point about Soros, he has a history of not being genuine. For example... I've liquidated my GLD holdings. Meanwhile, he could be buying physical as the market is plummeting. You just don't know what the guy's doing. He has said many times, um, bubbles are bad. Uh, gold's not in a bubble. And then he said, well, gold will be the biggest bubble of all. I mean, these are things that are disinformation oriented. So did he sell his GLD? Sure. Did he buy physical? He could have. Uh, but the markets are reacting 
to that news. And, it, you know, the, the gold market's not a big market. It overreacts to everything. But Vince, as a trader, when you see folks such as Soros exiting, is that a cue for you? Um, as a trader, it is absolutely a cue for me. Uh, um, there are several ways to look at it. One way I would look at it is, okay, Soros announced he liquidated. What did the market do? It sold off. Okay, then I'm going to go with the flow. That means I'm going to sell into it because there are there are a lot of weaker hands that are piggybacking him. The retail will get out. It'll be a retail-led, grassroots-led exodus. Um, and I will uh, happily do a couple day trades. Now, we didn't know Soros exited, but or maybe we did, but... But the Bollinger Bands that we showed you last week were the tell to get short. So um, that told us to get short for momentum, and, and, and it worked out quite well. Vince, let's get back to that talk of currencies for a second and how you mentioned the U.S. is uh, the only one not playing the game of devaluing their currency. One, what do you think is the strategy there? And two, what might that mean for gold? Well, the first country to ease aggressively in the world was the United States. And if you remember, we did what we had to do. And then we told Europe, you better do what you have to do if you expect us to do anything else. So we're done easing for now. But other countries are trying to catch up to us. So what you're seeing now is, for example, let's focus on Japan. Japan has had 20 years of deflation. The market is finally taking them seriously. Shinzo Abe is promising and uh, uh, being taken seriously on his inflation targeting and removal of deflation. So the yen is the first marble down the drain. It's spiraling downward. So you have a debasement there. What happens? Dollar goes up. Who's next? I don't know. Well, it's the sterling. Sterling is now uh, being debased. Island nations have to do it first because they need to export their things. So now you have two currencies going down the drain. The dollar benefits from this. It may seem like a negative, but it's not um, right now because it helps China get out of their longs. Uh, and, and, and that's another, another chapter we can talk about. But to stay focused, it's going to go around the world. Japan's going to ease. Sterling is going to weaken. The euro will weaken. And then it ends with the dollar. Despite the fact that the IMF and everyone's crying that we don't want the dollar to be the, the reserve currency, the market's saying, it is, guys, and we're going to put our money there. And in the end... The Fed says, everybody long dollars now? Oh, well, maybe the Fed doesn't say it, but then you look at the country, everyone's got weaker currencies but us. The dollar is strong. Now our joblessness goes up again. And in the next word cloud, when that happens, you don't see the word inflation anymore, you see jobs. And what happens is the people and the, and the uh, legislative branch start saying, we need jobs and we need to export more goods. Caterpillar starts screaming. And then the Fed all of a sudden gets permission to debase the currency again to make ourselves competitive export-wise. That's when you buy gold. I don't have a magic ball. I don't know when it's going to happen. But the dollar will be the second to last currency to devalue. And you better be long gold. Quickly, Vince, are there any final insights for the week? Yeah, I think I think you might be seeing a descent. The descent in gold slow down. I'm not getting bullish, but options have been the tell all the way down in this market. Uh, puts have been bought for the last two months, and these people have been spot on. Yesterday was the first day in a long time we saw call buying. It's not bullish call buying, but it's producer-related call buying covering shorts, which means the descent will slow or maybe over for now. Uh, the technical chart you have there, the daily, uh, is forming potential bottom depending on tomorrow's candlestick. The weekly, however, if you pull that up, doesn't look good. But that's a weekly we've been using for over a year now. And those two lines have not been violated. So if you're a buyer, buy it here and buy it lower. If you're a seller, sell it here with a stop. Vince, we'll see you at the end of next week. We'll see if your winning streak continues. Thank you very much and um, have a good trip. Thanks for watching this edition of Reset with Vince Lancey. You can email us any comments or questions at newsfeedback.kiko.com or follow this conversation at Daniela Camboni. Thanks for watching.